Hi, we're working on intermediate algebra. We're in section 3.4, which is dividing using long division. And this starts on page 112 in your book. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is uh, review some basic long division. And I just, uh, these are random numbers, just to review what happens with long division. Because when we start doing this with polynomials, it's actually the same steps. You just um, have to think about it a little bit differently. So when we divide using long division, and of course, I know most of you would probably do this on a calculator, but with polynomials, you can't use a calculator. So that's why we're reviewing this manually. We divide 5 into 32 goes six times. So the first step is divide. The second step is then you multiply what you wrote up here times your divisor and you write it down here underneath. Six times five is 30. So the second step is multiply. The third step is subtract. We subtract this, our multiplication from our starting numbers. So the third step is subtract, and 32 minus 30 is 2. And the fourth step is we bring down the next digit. And these basic four steps right here are the same steps we're going to use with polynomials. So that's why we're reviewing this, because then after we do that, we start all over again. So we're going to divide. 5 goes into 24 four times. Then we're going to multiply. 4 times 5 is 20. We're going to write that underneath. Then we're going to subtract. And then we're going to bring down. And we're going to do it all again. 5 goes into 46 9 times. 9 times 5 is 45. And when we subtract, we end up with 1. Uh, now, we have nothing left to bring down. If we were going to make this into a decimal, we'd put a decimal point here and a zero, and we'd bring down a zero. But with polynomials, we don't make them into decimals. So uh, we're going to talk about what happens with this remainder if we don't make it into a decimal. We're going to make it into a fraction. The remainder becomes the numerator of the fraction. So the remainder is going to be 1. Whatever that is, that becomes the numerator of the fraction. And the divisor becomes the denominator of the fraction. So the division here, the quotient, turns out to be 649 and 1 fifth. OK, example 1 on the bottom of page 112 says x squared plus 3x minus 4, that's a trinomial, divided by x minus 1. Uh, we can't divide this horizontally like this, so we're going to write it inside the box, like long division. Uh, the first polynomial always goes in the box. You want to make sure this polynomial is in descending order and there are no terms missing. In other words, the highest degree term, then the next lowest, then the next lowest, then the next lowest, all the way down to a zero degree. So this is a degree of two, degree of one, and a degree of zero. So there are no terms missing and it is in descending order. The divisor will go out here again, make sure it's in descending order. Okay. The first step was divide. When you do this divide, you only have to divide the first term into the first term. You can ignore these second terms for now. And actually with polynomials, it's easier to think about multiplication than division. So x times something I read up here is going to equal x squared. x times what equals x squared? Well, x times x equals x squared. And then you're going to take this and you're going to multiply it times your divisor. And most students find this easiest to write it out because you're going to distribute. So this x is this one coming down here, and this is your divisor here. Then you distribute, and you write it underneath. And that turns out to be x squared minus x. When I distribute this, x squared minus x. That was the multiply part. So divide, multiply. Now we come to subtract. With subtraction, the subtraction symbol actually goes in front of the whole polynomial. And if you remember when we did subtraction a few sections back, a subtraction symbol in front of a whole polynomial gets distributed and it changes all the signs. So a shortcut would be to just change these signs. This one turns negative, this one turns positive, 
and then you combine like terms. That's the subtraction part. This first term should always cancel. You engineered it that way. So make sure these are opposite signs when you cancel, and then you combine like terms here, you get 4x. Then you bring down the next term. And we're going to do it all again. x times what makes 4x? Well, that would be x times 4. So I have a positive 4 here. You take this term, you multiply it times your divisor. So that's going to be 4 times x minus 1. Distribute that, you get 4x minus 4. When you get to subtract, that means you need to change the signs here. So this becomes negative, this becomes positive, this first term should always cancel, and actually it turns out that these cancel also, and we have a remainder of zero. Um, if we had a remainder, then we would make a fraction out of it here, like we practiced before, but since there's no remainder, we don't need the fraction, and your answer is the divisor up here, x plus 4. All right, example 2 says 2x squared plus 3x plus 7 divided by 3 plus x. And by the way, this is on page 114 if you're trying to follow along. All right, we're going to write this in the box. This first term, this first polynomial always goes in the box. Make sure it's in descending order. It is. This is degree 2, degree 1, degree 0. There's no terms missing. So that's going to go in here. 2x squared plus 3x plus 7. And the second polynomial is a divisor. This is not in descending order. So when you write it here, you need to change the order of these terms. This should be x plus 3. You're going to have trouble dividing it if it's not in descending order. All right, x times what makes 2x squared? Well, that would be x times 2x. Take that term you just wrote times your divisor and write it underneath. This is distribute here. So that becomes 2x squared plus 6x. When you get ready to do the subtract, you change the signs of these terms that you just wrote. So these are both negatives now. The first term should always cancel. When you cancel like this, make sure that they are opposite signs, because I've seen a lot of students cancel this one really, they forgot to change the signs, and that gives you a problem here. All right, when I add these down here, I get negative 3x. Then I bring down the plus 7, and I do the whole thing again. x times what makes negative 3x, and that would be negative 3. Then I write negative 3 here. I multiply it times my divisor. Distribute that. You get negative 3x minus 9. When you come to the subtraction, you change the signs. The first terms cancel. Then when I add these, I get 16. All right, you know you're done when this degree is smaller than this degree or less. This is degree 1. This is a degree 0, so we're done, and this is the remainder. This remainder we're going to turn into a fraction up here. Make sure you always bring the plus sign with it because you are making a new term. Uh, if this was a negative remainder, we'd use a minus sign here. The 16 becomes the numerator. The divisor, x plus 3, becomes the denominator. And this is your final answer, your quotient, right up here. Okay, for example 3, we have 5x cubed plus 4x minus 7x squared divided by x squared plus 2x plus 1. All right, we're going to put this in the long division box. The first thing I notice when I get ready to write this is, is it not in descending order. This is a degree 2, and it should go here. So these two terms need to be flipped. So that will be 5x cubed minus 7x squared plus 4x. Do not forget, if you change the order, that the sign goes with this coefficient. So that's why this is a negative 7x squared. This is a positive 4x. The other thing I notice is that there's actually a term missing here. When you look at these degrees, this is degree 3, 2, 1, there's no zero degree term or no constant term. If you have a term missing like this, you need to add a zero in there. 
you should have all terms all the way up to whatever your highest degree is down to a zero degree or a constant term. This divisor is in descending order. It's going to go out here. So x squared plus 2x plus 1. The only thing, um, if you notice now, this is a trinomial instead of the last two examples were binomials. The only thing that changes is when you do your distribute, you just have more multiplying. That's the only thing that it changes. x squared times what makes 5x cubed? Well, that would be times 5 x. So 5x times x squared plus 2x plus 1, and I'm being a little squishy here. Maybe I should zoom out a little bit. Let's erase this and write it again. So 5x times x squared plus 2x plus 1 you just distribute this and write it underneath. So that gives us 5x cubed plus 10x squared plus 5x. The next step is the subtract, and that changes these signs. So this is negative, negative, negative. First term always cancels. Check to make sure they are opposite signs. Then you just combine like terms. So this is becomes a negative 17x squared and a negative 1x. Bring down the next term. Do the whole thing again. x squared times what makes negative 17x squared, and that would be negative 17. Then we're going to distribute that negative 17 times x squared plus 2x plus 1, we're going to distribute that and write it underneath. So that's going to be negative 17x squared minus 34x minus 17. When you get ready to do the subtract part, you change the signs. So this becomes a positive, a positive, a positive, and these are all positives now. First terms cancel always making sure they are opposite signs. And then we combine like terms down. So this becomes 33x plus 17. All right, you're done when this degree is less than this degree. So this is degree two, this is degree one. So this is gonna become the numerator of our fractional term. So plus sign, bring both of these terms up to be the numerator here. So 33x plus 17 over the divisor, this entire trinomial, x squared plus 2x plus 1. And this entire thing, this entire quotient up here is your final answer. All right, example four is on page 117. It says x to the fourth plus 10x squared minus x plus nine divided by x squared minus five x plus three. So we're gonna write this inside our division box, making sure this is in descending order and there are no missing terms. All right, well, this is degree four, degree two, degree one, degree zero. So they're in descending order, however, there is a degree missing. There is no degree three term. So when I transfer this in here, I'm gonna add a degree three term. Um, and that's how, this is how this works. X to the fourth would be the fourth degree. I need a third degree. So I have a co coefficient of zero, X cubed. And that has no value. It's just really gonna be a placeholder. Um, you can do this without adding that in, but you may have trouble lining up your like terms. This is a 10. Alright, so because there was no 3 degree, I used a 0 coefficient with an x cubed. Now, if you leave off the 0 coefficient, you're going to have a, an invisible 1 here. You cannot do that. That will change the value if you put a 1 here. So make sure you use the coefficient of 0 when you put in the missing terms. 
Um, so what else do I have? 10x squared minus x plus 9. This is the divisor. This goes here. It's already in descending order. So we're going to have x squared minus 5x plus 3. All right, x squared times what makes x to the fourth, and that would be x squared. Take that x squared that you just wrote, multiply it times your divisor, and write it underneath. That's going to give us x to the fourth minus 5x cubed plus 3x squared. Okay, if you're watching right now, you'll see if I did not put this extra term in here, these like terms would not have lined up correctly because this term would have been over here and you would have had trouble combining like terms. So that's the only purpose for filling this in is to make sure that your like terms all line up. All right, in the subtract, we change signs. So that's a negative. This is a positive. This is a negative. These first terms cancel, always making sure they are different signs. And then I combine like terms vertically. So this becomes 5x cubed plus 7x squared. And I bring down the next term, negative x. And I'm going to do the whole thing again. x squared times what makes 5x cubed? And that would be 5x. So this becomes 5x here. Then I'm going to take that 5x, I'm going to write it here, and I'm going to multiply it times my divisor, x squared minus 5x plus 3, and that's going to be a distribute, and write it underneath, 5x cubed minus 25x squared plus 15x. Then we're going to change signs, so negative, positive, negative, these cancel again, make sure they're different signs. When I add this, I get 32x squared minus 16x, and I bring down the last term, which is a plus 9. I can do the whole thing again now. x squared times what makes 32x squared? That would be 32. And I'm going to multiply that 32 times my divisor, x squared minus 5x plus 3. So that becomes 32x squared minus 160x plus 96. All right, now I need to uh, do the subtract part, which is change the signs. So this becomes negative, positive, negative. I cancel these, making sure they're opposite signs. <coughs> when I combine these, I'm going to get 144x minus <coughs> 87. Now, I can tell I'm done because this is degree 2 on my divisor. This is degree 1 on my remainder, so we're done. So this is going to become the uh, last term here as a fraction. So let's use blue. Um, plus sign. 144x minus 87 over the divisor, which we can't see anymore, which is over here. So x squared minus 5x plus 3. So this is your final answer here, always up here at the top. All right, looks like that's it for this section. So um, I know you're going to have some questions. Just bring your questions to class. We'll review together and look at the homework on page 120.